We're back in the offices of Integrated Wealth Management, and today we have with us Alex Hayes, who's Vice President at Putnam Investments. Alex, welcome. Thank you very much for having me, Kevin. Sure. So, what's your background in this industry? Well, I've been in the industry for just about 12 years now. Started back east as a bond broker in 1999. I've been with two other mutual fund companies, and I've been with Putnam Investments for just over the last five years. It's been a pretty good run for it's you, has It's been a great it? run, yes. Good. So, Alex, what is the average cost for a college education these days? It's a great question. Nationwide right now for public institutions and public colleges, it's around $7,600. And for private institutions and the private colleges and universities, it's upwards north of $27,000 on average oh. and rising. That's a, that's a lot of money. I mean, how are people paying for that education? Traditionally, there's been many different ways, maybe out of savings or a home equity loan, uh, UGMA or UPMA accounts, Coverdell IRAs or educational IRAs, what they used to be called. The most common way over the last decade is 529 plans, and that's an IRS code. That's a new type of plan that was offered uh, just about over 10 years ago. Well, you know, tell me about these UTMA, UGMA, Coverdale, and 529 plans. Sure. Unified Gift to Minors Act, as well as Unified Trust to Minors Act. The, these type of accounts are traditionally owned and held by the child or the beneficiary. Once they become the age of ma majority, whether it's 18 or 21, depending upon the state which they live in, then they can take control of the assets. The major benefit here in the 529 plan is the parents control the assets or the grandparents control the assets, and it does not transfer over to the, the minor or the child upon age of majority and grows tax-free. Okay. So what happens when, in these plans when, uh, let's say, the child doesn't use the money? Sure. In some cases, that does happen. In the 529 plan, you could change the beneficiary to w whatever the IRS deems another family member. You can actually make the beneficiary yourself, and you can actually take an early liquidation or a non-qualified liquidation. At that point, it will be a 10% penalty uh, if you're driving around in a new car and be taxed at ordinary income. Otherwise, you can change the name to yourself, still keep those assets, and use it for any accredited institution for post-secondary education, whether it's a culinary school or a golf school, you can still use those, those assets for education. So on a 529 plan, uh, I have the ability to use the money myself for uh, qualified educational expenses uh, for, or for my child. I can also switch then f uh, beneficiaries from child to child? Correct. So let's say you have an older daughter or an older son that does not go to college for one reason or another, or they have leftover assets. You can actually then change the beneficiary to that younger child. And I can't do that with the UTMA or UGMA, the custodial accounts? Correct. The child is the owner and also the beneficiary. Now, with the custodial accounts, uh, they can be used like the 529s only for higher education expenses? Typically, no. The, the UGMA or custodial accounts can typically be used for whatever the child would like to use. So if they become the age of majority at age 18 or 21, they can now take control of those assets and go buy a new car or uh, use them for whatever they'd like. And before they become age of majority, the parents can make the decision to use that for a camp or tutoring or anything that benefits the child? Correct. That's good. So how are these vehicles treated differently by uh, financial aid when it comes time to uh, qualify for that, for loans, for grants? Correct. Yeah. Well, typically it's not held against the, the parents uh, against financial aid, meaning that it's only held against up to 5.6% of their entire asset base. If it's put in the grandparents' name, it's not held against them whatsoever when the child goes for financial aid. Alex, are there tax benefits for investing in a 529 plan? Absolutely. Uh, right off the bat, you definitely want to look at your own state's 529 plan. It's viewed upon as a municipal security. And in certain instances, there is a tax break depending upon which state you live in. So I would definitely recommend taking a look at your own state's plan. Here in California, there is no tax benefit. So there's much more open architecture of where you can pivot to in other out-of-state plans. How soon should you start saving for a child's education? The earlier, the better, and the more frequent. Dollar cost averaging or just 
you know, whatever you can set aside on a monthly, quarter, or annual basis, the compounding of numbers traditionally will, will work out very well in the long haul. So uh, right now I have a three-month-old child, uh, and, you know, we've already started saving for college slowly but surely. So whatever you can do, $20, $50, $50 a month, you know, whatever you can do to save, the earlier the better uh, will work out best. And then once the uh, the child doesn't use all the money you've saved up, you'll be taking golf lessons at the community college? <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> if my wife will allow me to do that, but we'll, we'll see. Alex, thank you so much for joining us here at Willow Glen Emotion and talking to us about ways that we can save for our children's education. Great. Thank you. While there is no single reason that kids drop out of school, the lack of basic learning and social skills, difficult transitions to middle and high school, and economic struggles all play a significant role. Dropouts significantly diminish their chances to secure a good job and promising futures. Moreover, not only do the individuals themselves suffer, but each class of dropouts is responsible for substantial financial and social costs to the communities, states, and countries in which they live. Start early working with your children. Play an active role in their formal education. Seek guidance when you begin to see signs of struggle. And plan ahead for educational expenses. We will post links to some of the excellent resources we use for the show on our website at willowglenandmotion.com. And we look forward to seeing your children thrive and become self-confident contributing members of this community, making sure that Willow Glen is and will continue to be a great place to live, work, shop, play, and be educated. Until next time, let's keep Willow Glen in motion. <music>